Hello, friend. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. This is Pastor Pitts Evans. On this podcast, we read and discuss one chapter of God's Word per episode. Let's go now to the Bible and see what the Lord has for us today. Revelation chapter 14. Then I looked, and there before me was the Lamb, standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a sound from heaven, like the roar of rushing waters, and like a loud peal of thunder. The sound I heard was like that of harpists playing their harps. And they sang a new song before the throne, and before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. These are those who did not defile themselves with women, for they remained virgins. They follow the Lamb wherever He goes. They were purchased from among mankind and offered as firstfruits to God and to the Lamb. No lie was found in their mouths. They are blameless. Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. A second angel followed and said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, which made all the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. A third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and its image and receives its mark on their forehead or their hand, they too will drink the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. They will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. There will be no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and its image, or for anyone who receives the mark of its name. This calls for patient endurance on the part of the people of God, who keep His commands and remain faithful to Jesus. Then... I heard a voice from heaven say, Write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, for their deeds will follow them. I looked, and there before me was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man, with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, Take your sickle and reap, because the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. Another angel came out of the temple in heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. Still another angel, who had charge of the fire, came from the altar, and called in a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle, Take your sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of grapes from the earth's vine, because its grapes are ripe. The angel swung his sickle on the earth, gathered its grapes, and threw them into the great winepress of God's wrath. They were trampled in the winepress outside the city, and blood flowed out of the press, rising as high as the horses' bridles, for a distance of 1,600 stadia. We encounter the 144,000 again who were first introduced in chapter 7. So in Revelation 14, verse 1, we read, Then I looked, and there before me was the Lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. Now, we just came from a chapter where the, uh, the people that worshiped the beast had his name or had his mark on their foreheads or their hands. And here, the Lord has his name on the people of God's foreheads. The 144,000 that belong to him are marked on their foreheads uh, with the name of God the Father and the name of 
God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb. It's interesting. Um, uh, it makes me wonder if the beast mark is spiritual and if this mark is spiritual as opposed to something visible. But these 144,000, we get a little more details on them as to who they are or uh, their attributes. In verse 4, we read, These are those who did not defile themselves with women, for they remained virgins. So they're um, virgins spiritually or physically, we don't know. They follow the Lamb wherever He goes. So these are followers of Jesus. They clearly were followers of Jesus. And verse 4 tells us, They were purchased from among mankind and offered as firstfruits to God and the Lamb. So these were redeemed men. And uh, verse 5, No lie was found in their mouths. They're blameless. And so they're not liars. They're virgins. Whether this speaks of spiritual purity, we're not sure. But they were purchased from among mankind for God and for the Lamb, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 6, Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. Now, this is the good news about Jesus. We remember from uh, Matthew's gospel, Jesus said in chapter 24, verse 14, this gospel will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. And so this angel is empowering the spread of the gospel to those uh, who live on the earth. And uh, after his proclamation at some point soon, the end will come. And this angel that's proclaiming the eternal good news in verse 7 says in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. It's a very clear admonition to worship God. In verse 8, A second angel followed and said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, which made all the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. Uh, This fallen, fallen is an interesting reference. Fallen, fallen is Babylon. We've seen that before in the Bible. In Isaiah chapter 21, uh, verse 9, we read, Look, here comes a man in a chariot with a team of horses and gives back the answer. Babylon has fallen, has fallen. All the images of its gods lie on the ground. Now, in Isaiah, it was prophesying the destruction of the kingdom of Babylon, which had not yet ascended in the time of Isaiah's writing. Babylon would one day ascend as a world power and, as you know, destroy the Middle East, take Israel captive, um, destroy the temple, and so forth. And so what is this Babylon the Great that the angel is talking about in Revelation 14. Several theories have come forward. Of course, actually, the Babylon uh, where Nebuchadnezzar reigned could be in view. Uh, It could be Rome or the Roman Empire. Some have said that it is the Roman Empire. The truth is, it's not explained within the text what Babylon the Great is. And so it could be even a reference to um, another city, perhaps Jerusalem. But whatever it is, The uh, destruction of Babylon is prophesied through the Old Testament scriptures. And here we read in verse 8, Babylon the great has fallen, which made all the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. And so whatever this adulterous Babylon is, it's now destroyed in verse 8. In verse 13, we read, I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the spirit, they will rest from their labor for their deeds will follow them. And so people are still um, believing in Jesus. They're still dying on the earth at this point in verse 13, but they're blessed according to the word of the Lord because they're going to rest from their labors and the fact that they trusted in Jesus will follow them. In verse 14, we read about Jesus and the harvest of the earth. John looked and there before him was a white cloud and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. We've heard about this man coming with clouds previously, uh, one like a son of man, as we just read in John. Daniel prophesied about the one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. And Daniel wrote in chapter 7, verse 14, he was given authority, glory, and sovereign power All nations and people of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, 
and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. And so the one that was sitting on the cloud is instructed in the book of Revelation to take a sickle and reap because the time has come for the harvest of the earth. And so he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. And then another angel came out of the temple in heaven. He too had a sharp sickle. Still another angel who had the charge of the fire that was on the altar of God came out and spoke to the one with the sharp sickle, saying, Take your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grapes from the earth's vine, because its grapes are ripe. The angel swung his sickle on the earth, gathered its grapes, and threw them into the great winepress of God's wrath. They were trampled as the winepress outside of the city, and the blood flowed out of the press for a distance of 180 miles, is um, 1600 stadia. So 180 miles out of the city, uh, the blood flowed from the wrath of God that's falling on those that did not serve the Lord. Now, in this chapter, Jesus appears as the Lamb of God in Jerusalem with his followers, the, uh, the Lamb standing on Mount Zion and the 144,000. Jesus appears as the Lamb of God in the book of Revelation at least 24 different times. And so the Lamb is representing Jesus, and he will ultimately appear in Jerusalem, as we know. He'll descend into Jerusalem at the culmination of all things. And Jesus will harvest his own from the earth and rule forever, as we read in Revelation and as it was prophesied in the book of Daniel. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will never pass away, and his kingdom will never be destroyed. We look forward to that great day. And Lord, today we proclaim that Jesus will have authority, glory, and sovereign power over all nations and people of every language on this earth. Lord, we say that every people will worship you. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God, the Lord that takes away our sins. Lord, we bless you for what you've done. We bless you for what you're doing and what you've yet to do. Come, Lord Jesus. May the eternal good news of your gospel be proclaimed over the whole earth. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.